Good? Yeah. Yes. Hello, everyone. Sorry for being late, a little uh, mishap in my schedule. Um, so I'm here today to talk to you about using OpenStack as a software factory. Uh, I'm here with uh, Mehdi Abakouk. He's one of our software engineers. He's the guy really doing the work. Um, I'll be the one presenting today uh, because he's telling me that my English is better. Uh, however, if you have any questions, I'm sure he'll be the guy answering them. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. So, very briefly, we both work for Innovance. Innovance is a small company that has been in the OpenStack area for the past two years that has existed for five years. Recently, we grew, well, when I arrived at Innovance, we were about 50 people. Today, uh, less, sorry, 20 people. And uh, a year later, we are now 100 people. Uh, we uh, have an office in Paris, that's our headquarter. We've got an office in Montreal, and we are opening offices in the US, in Asia, a couple ones in Bangalore and Singapore soon. So the reason why I'm on stage today is to state the obvious. OpenStack makes developers envious and dubious. Why that? Why is OpenStack such uh, a project that when I talk to in-house developers, to tell me, oh, how do you guys do it? How can OpenStack handle 400 committers per month? And more than that, I think the latest statistic is 405. Developers are coming from 250 companies, uh, have more than 10 integrated projects, and yet, be able to release a new version every six months that, for the last version, had close to 400 new features or blueprints without any major inconsistencies. That's the big question that people are asking. How do you guys do it? Because most of the time when I talk to these in-house developers, they have a big team of about 50 people and they don't know how to cons consistently merge their work. They spend months in their development cycle just merging their work. And all of this in OpenStack is done with a single product manager, uh, release manager. He's right here, Thierry Carrez. And apparently this guy still has time to play ping pong. <laughs> so how does this happen? And Thierry would be in a better position than I am to explain to you the detail of this. But the answer really lays in the process. In the process, but not only that, also in the fact that without having a formal TDD environment, it is absolutely required for any patches that enter OpenStack to come together with its unit test. And it's becoming more and more recommended for new functionality to come with its functional tests. And together, this process with the ability to continuously test what is being added as not breaking what has been done before, which can be summarized in this little diagram here, is really the key to being able to handle so many developers, so many companies, contributing to so many projects, yet make sure that at every step of the process, nothing breaks. So if we detail the, the process, we see that, well, anything that you will do in OpenStack, start with either a blueprint, that's for a new feature, or a bug report, that's to fix something that is not behaving the way you want. And generally, you're going to be getting the code locally on your machine, coding away your fix or your new functionality, do a quick test on your local machine, and as soon as you're satisfied with it, you're going to push it to Garrett. So what does Garrett do? 
the first thing Garrick does, even before anybody else reviews your code, it's going to be talking to Jenkins that is going to perform the full test suite, not only against your patch, but against the whole project. So that if your patch introduces a regression anywhere in the project, you'll know immediately. Immediately, there is a little guy named Jenkins that is going to come and put a minus one on your contribution. If that passes, then your peers are going to be able to review your code and eventually core reviewers are going to be able to approve your code. And that's when Jenkins enter again. Redo the test. Why do we redo the test after the approval? Because there can be a, a, some period of time that occur between your first patch submission and the approval. And during that time, what could have happened? Some other people in some area, other areas of the project could have contributed other features that suddenly you're breaking with your patch. So we don't want to merge something that is breaking that. And if that's work, then it is merged. And when it is merged, what's happening, the status of your bug report, of your, your, the initial uh, blueprint is going to get updated. And let's say that we've got now multiple sets of patches. At some point, the PTL together with the release manager decides to do a release. They just have to do a tag in Git, and that automatically builds a release. So this process, together with the test-driven implementation, is making OpenStack possible. One of the great things about this process is that everything regarding the process itself is in Git. So that means that the description, the code, uh, the infrastructure, the deployment of the infrastructure de needed to test your patch, the, everything that, you, that is possibly needed is treated as, go, as code in Git, meaning that technically anyone can improve that infrastructure when they think there is a failure. And that happens all the time on the OpenStack project. And overall, it's really 100 times better than having to write your documentation, your how-to, compile your project, build your project to be able to test it locally. Because in every software houses where we had such a documentation, and we were forced to have such a documentation, by the time I was using the documentation, the process had already changed, and the, the how-to, if followed step by step, would no, never be up to date. This doesn't happen on OpenStack. We do have some failures. Sometimes there, is, there are race conditions, but we've got a few infrastructure guys that are there to help us figure that out and fix them quite fast. So in the end, we at Innovance found this process so good that we felt that we had to share that process outside of the OpenStack project. And in order to share it, well, we're a business. We built a solution. We, we are offering a solution to customer to reproduce this process internally. So what, what is it that we offer? Well, if you look at it from far away enough, we offer a way to deploy an OpenStack cloud, which is going to be quite key because this OpenStack cloud is going to be what is running, going to be running all your tests. And we deploy on top of it as well the various tools that compose the software factory. So we are talking here about Git, Garrett, Jenkins mainly. There are quite a few others. Then you connect it to wherever you maintain your bugs, wherever you maintain your blueprint. That varies. Then you create a new project, and you can immediately start coding. So why is this so great? Well, first of all, it's a great way to improve the efficiency of your development team. There is a great value in having everything that is being done in your development team 
being stored in a central location. If you share stuff, you're making sure that everybody can access it. You're making sure that you can set access rights and you can control these access rights to limit visibility if you are working on some sensitive uh, matters. You're making sure that you're, through this tool, instigating a contributive model inside of your company. And one of the things that I've learned is we are all a lot better when we collaborate, when we co-contribute to something. There is no way a single man today can know everything about any environment. And it's only through the exchange that we have, one with the other, that we are able to build better things. And this kind of process really contributes to it because it provides the infrastructure needed to have easy and fast collaboration. Another gain from it is that you won't need a full release team. I've seen large projects use up to 10 people in the release team, the build management team, generally it's called. And these guys generally have no hair after doing this job for about three months. And another benefit is the fact that developers are, well, like most computer users, like a gas. They always want to expand more. And they will always find a good reason why they need more hardware to test what they're developing. The great thing is, because we're using OpenStack as a basis for this, we have a mean to factorize that hardware across the development team. So instead of having to buy, let's be excessive, 10 machines per developer, you can have, I don't know, 20 machines for the whole team that they're going to be sharing. But the main thing is let's put the team to work as soon as possible. As soon as you start a project, you don't have to wait for ages to, for everybody to understand how the project works. You can get to it very fast. Another great thing about this environment is we can extend it a little bit to manage reproducible environment. And when you're not in the open source business, very often you have to custom tailor your environment for a given customer. So let's say that you've made a special release of your great software that, uh, um, I don't know, prints bills for your big customer in India. This customer is going to be working with this version for quite a long time, a year, maybe two, maybe three. And three years later, he hasn't upgraded, but yet he calls you with a bug. Do you think you will have maintained an environment that is exactly the same as your customer that you can, where you can reproduce a bug? Not really. The great thing is that by using reproducible environments, because everything is stored as code, we can rebuild this in, in, in environment, this specific environment, in the exact binary state it was three years ago through a simple click. You just ask to restore at a given point in, your, in the history of your project. You also have a mean for developers to generate a test and a debug environment using whatever release they want at any point in time. And of course, you're sharing resources so that with Jenkins that is also going to be launching new environments to perform the test on demand. Another uh, great area is the ability we have to parallelize the work. Very often, you have multiple options in a project, and that's a case in OpenStack. You've got cases where you want to test with KVM, other cases where you want to test with Zen. And if you had to rebuild the full hardware environment manually to do the test, this would take ages. The great, way, the great thing is that with OpenStack, you can create virtual environment that allows to test exactly the same thing with very few differences from the real world. 
You can also accommodate more developers on a single em environment than you would have normally. And you also drastically limit wait times. If you're not using such an environment, you would have to wait for your colleague to have completed a modification before you're able to do yours. Here you can really apply distributed uh, methods. So finally, what you're doing is that you're really industrializing your development process, and you can release more often. Releasing more often, well, this is something that in open source we strongly advertise. Release early, release often. I guess everybody has heard of that. And this is no joke. When you can release, you have points in time to which you can go back. You have points which can be used to check what you've done with a product manager or a product owner or with a customer. And the more often you do so, the more able you are to course correct how you're developing your product. And this is really, really a, a key for more agile uh, software development. So how is it delivered by Innovance to uh, our customer? So to deploy the base OpenStack installation, we use a tool that we developed called eDeploy together with Puppet modules, which are the community Puppet modules that we co-maintain with quite a few others, including Red Hat, including so many others, I won't be able to list them. eDeploy is a tool that we uh, are developing. It's open source, it's available on uh, GitHub, slash Innovant, you will find e uh, eDeploy. Uh, the reason why we decided to develop yet another deployment tool is very simple. We wanted something that used images as the basis of deployment on machine. Something that understood that you needed some time to do rollbacks on your deployments. Something that could distinguish what is code from what is data on your machine so that when you do a rollback, you're not losing prior work. And this is why we started eDeploy. In order to deploy what's on top of OpenStack, meaning the components that transform this OpenStack deployment into a software factory, well, again, we use Puppet. But in order to orchestrate the deployment of this tool, well, we use Heat. There's nothing better to reproduce, to, to produce orchestrated environment today on OpenStack that, than Heat. And Whenever heat doesn't meet our requirements, we have the possibility to modify it. Another thing that we did, because we said, hey, in order to use Git right now, we have to mount a file system. And mounting a file system means a lot more complexity when I outgrow this file system capacity, a lot more complexity in order to provide high availability. So, why don't we modify Git, and we use Dulwich in, the, in this case, to be able to use Swift as a backend? So that suddenly you have a scalable, highly available, redundant storage for Git. I told you about having the ability to store environment so that we could get back to them at the same binary stage later on in the history of the project. And storing binaries, binary blobs, again, that's a job for Swift. Every time you tag a release, all the components of the release are stored there. So that means that you can do ACL to give public or not public access to the binary you've produced. You can have an history of all the binaries and get back to them whenever you want. Another thing that we did is we found the 
initialization process of a new project a little bit tedious. So we built a web UI that allows to generate everything you need in order for this project to be kickstarted. And finally, because there are no two use cases that are exactly the same when we deal with real customers, we have to do some customization to implement a specific workflow. Some people like to have two reviews. Some people like to have one. Some people like to have none. Well, the one that I've known, we try to convince otherwise. Um, some people you don't use uh, Redmine, Launchpad, or Jira. So we need to uh, work with them. Some people are used to Mercurial. Oh, great thing. Git has a very nice way to become the underneath repo for about any DVCS that you can think of. And some people come with uh, exotic language saying, oh, will that work? And we have to show them that it works nicely in their specific environment. So I, I would have loved to tell you, hey, this project is available today, right now. All the modifications that we've made in upstream projects that I described have, are already in the upstream projects. That's our policy at Innovance. We have this delivery law at Innovance is that we never, ever deliver a patch to a customer that has not been merged upstream. That doesn't mean released. But if upstream hasn't merged our patch, our customer won't get it. So this is what applied to, uh, to here. So the, the Dolwich modification, all the other modifications that we, that we made are already upstream. But the whole package is slated to be ready sometime in the next three months. Of course, we are dog fooding this, and our, our very first customer for this product is ourselves, because that's very helpful for us to be able to handle uh, our deliveries for customer. And we've got uh, currently one alpha customer uh, with whom we are, we are working and validating what we are doing as we progress. OK, so that's it for this presentation. But uh, we'll be happy to answer your question. Uh, I'm happy that Mehdi will be here to eventually help me if you guys get too technical. So for the part uh, that you use Swift as a Git backend, uh, did you um, open source that part? Or? Yeah, that's uh, in the Dolwich project, which is uh, a Git implementation in Python. You'll find our... Uh, what is the project name again? Dolwich. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much.